Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zhi Chao from University of Minnesota. Uh, Professor David Du is my advisor. Uh, currently, I work uh, in the RocksDB team at Facebook. This research work is done together with Sing and Sager uh, from Facebook. I will present our research of categorizing, modeling, and benchmarking RocksDB key value workloads at Facebook. So we know that key value stores are widely used by different companies to support different services, like uh, SQL database, uh, file system, object storage, and also key value store is very hard in research area. I just list some of the uh, papers related to key value store in different um, top conference. We can see that last year, FAST has about uh, five papers on Kira Store, and this year we have four. So that's still a very important research area. However, question comes, there are some gaps in the current Kira Store development and research, which motivate us to propose and work on this project. So first, we know that key value workloads in different applications will be very different, but there are very limited study of the real world workloads for their characteristics and uh, for the features. So this is one limitation. Another way is we know that the key value store is different from the file system or block storage. So the way to analyze the key value workloads will be different from the file system or block level analysis. So how to capture, analyze, and model the workloads of key value store in different applications are challenging. And also, based on the real workloads, we may have the question, what's the limitations of the existing key value store or key value uh, benchmarks, for example? Does the queries look the same? Uh, how about the storage I.O. is triggered by the benchmark? and also how to further improve the benchmarks. Those are the questions. And in order to answer the aforementioned questions and address the challenges, we need some weapon, right? So we introduce a research flow, or we call that methodology, and also a set of tools to help the research on the keyword store workload analyzing and improve the benchmarks. So first, we know that, okay, if you are a researcher or you are a company, you want to start with some uh, key value store product. Then you may want, okay, we have some benchmark to test the performance and see what the parameters or options we want to set and then tune it or improve it. But if the benchmark does not reflect the real work workloads, what can you do, right? So in order to solve this problem, we introduce a full loop or the feedback to improve the benchmark. First, we introduce the trace collector for RocksDB that is already open sourced, and it will trace down the queries from the different applications workloads and writes into the record. It will tell you, okay, what's the keys, value, and what's the timestamp, also other detailed information. Then, we develop a set of analyzer, analyzing tools which reads the trace file and generates a set of uh, reports for the statistics and distribution of the workload. Based on those characteristics, you can do the modeling. You can use either MATLAB or use uh, a Python tool to fit into different models and find out, okay, which model will be the best one. Then we finish the whole loop, right? We can improve the benchmark and validate it. In another way, with the trace file, we can replay it. It can be treated as a real workload, such that we can compare the replay results with the benchmarking results to see, okay, what's the issue there and what's the things we can improve so that we can adjust or improve the benchmark. So that's a whole tool set and methodology for this research work. And we hope that other researchers or the developers can use it to further explore more applications and more use cases. So let's look at the, the RocksDB and the uh, production use case at Facebook. Then we can look at the workloads. So I guess most of the people know about RocksDB that is based on the LSM tree. And uh, new QL pairs will be cached in the MEM table. And after it is full or satisfy some of the condition, it will become immutable and flushed out as the SAT file in the file system. And after some time, 
if one level meets the condition, the SSD files are selected to be compact with the files in the next level or next several levels. So you call that compaction. During the compaction, it will remove some of the killer pals being deleted or filter out some of the killer pals. So uh, RocksDB has the column family concept, which is the logical separation of the, the database. And uh, RocksDB supports different APIs that get, put, delete, single delete, range delete, iterator, and merge. Keep in mind that merge is a very special operator. If you do an update for your, for your data, maybe you just do a get and then update the value right back to the put. But get is expensive in uh, RocksDB in some way. So we introduced the merge, which stores your delta of your updates. And you just need one operation to achieve the updates. And let's look at the three production use cases at Facebook. The first one is UDB, which is uh, my SQL tier at Facebook. We use that to support the social graph related data, which means uh, most type of data are the objects. That's like the post, user, or those kind of things. And another type is the association, which set up the connections between the objects. So we use the MySQL to store those objects and uh, associations in different SQL tables. And uh, inside MySQL, the original inner DB is replaced by the uh, rocks DB, and we use my rocks to do the conversion from SQL table to the RocksDB's key value pairs. And finally, those data are stored in the file system. So we can see in this use case, the key of the RocksDB usually uh, has the first part as the table index number, and the second part is the primary key. And if we, use, if we set up the secondary index, then the key will be the table number plus the secondary key and the primary key. So the key composition is totally different in different tables and the different schema. So the second use case is ZPDB. So ZPDB is a distributed key value store based on Paxos. And each instance is one RustDB instance. And uh, we collect the workload from the primary instance from ZPDB, and this instance supports the Facebook's object storage metadata service. So in this use case, you can see the key is usually the path of the object or the name of the object, and the value is used to be the pointer or the address of the object in the object system. The third use case is very special. The UP2X is the storage for the user profile data, and those data are used by the machine learning and AI platforms to do the training, inferencing, and the prediction. So we can see for the user profile data, they may have the counters, logs, and some of the statistics. So there are a lot of updates. UP2X leverage the merge API to achieve the updates and write the data to RocksDB. So the query's um, behavior in UP2Tax is very special. Um, based on those three use cases, we use our tool to collect the trees in UP2Tax, UDB, and ZPDB for from 24 hours to 14 days in, in the trees file. And uh, we analyze uh, different uh, query compositions like the, uh, also the key value size and the QPS, all those things uh, give us a picture about what's the characteristics of the production workload at RocksDB. Let's first look at the key value query composition in the three use case. We find out that actually from different applications, the query composition can be very different. Let's look at this figure. You can see that for the UDB, which supports the uh, um, social graph, and ZPDB, which supports the metadata service of the uh, object store, read dominates the total query types. But for the UP2X, merge is the heaviest one, which is more than 90% of the queries. But inside one RocksDB instance, if we look at different uh, column families, Actually, the query composition can be very different. For example, in the UDB case, 
if we look at the column family which supports the objects in the social graph, read and write get put are the major one. But if you look at the secondary index which supports the association, it use some put, but the major one are the single delete, iterator, and uh, delete, which means different services will access different column families inside one uh, RuxDB instance. For the key and value size, also they have some special things. First, let's look at the key size variation. The standard uh, derivation of the key size is not very high, which means the key size in the three use case does not change much. These just uh, skew to a very narrow distribution. But value size may change a lot. They have a long tail distribution. And in the UDB case, the value size is usually very large. That because, so in the social graph, for example, if somebody posts something, the post can be large. If you post a photo, you post a like, or that can be um, 100 bytes or even larger. But in the other use case, like ZPDB, the value is usually the uh, location of the objects, so the value size can be small, smaller than uh, 50 bytes. And if we look at the uh, distribution of the key size, we can find out in the ZPDB case, general, in general, we have two major key size, like uh, 50 bytes, and another is about 90 bytes. And also in the UP2X case, if the key size is even fixed to like eight bytes and 16 bytes. But for the uh, UDB case, in some column family, the key size is fixed to some value like 10 bytes, 20 bytes. But for the association secondary index, the key size can be very large, even larger than 100 bytes. That's because for the secondary index, we put more information in the secondary index to do the iteration, to do the scan, and, f and search for the things we need. So we put more information in the key. The value size distribution is different. We can see the values have a long tail distribution, especially for the object in the UDB. And there is a special part in the UP2X. You can see there is a high jump in the CDF, CDF which indicates that more than 50% of the value, the size are the same. That's because you can see for those user profile data, you may use a structure, data structure to store those counters, right? So that can be a fixed size to 64 bytes or the other values. So this is a high jump. And uh, if we look at the intensiveness of the workloads, we find out that for the UDB case, it is closely related to the social graph. So the query per second varies like a diurnal pattern, which means during the daytime, the workload is very heavy, a lot of read and write, and during the night, that's very light. And uh, if we look at the different query type, the QPS can be different, like the deletion, iterator, single delete, we do not find such a kind of pattern. That's because those queries are triggered by the internal service of Facebook instead of the users. So the query is different. And also for the different uh, column families, the QPS is different. Like the secondary index, which supports the ETL in the uh, Facebook, the, we do not have such kind of variation. And uh, for the ZPDB and UP2X, they do not directly connect to the social graph. So we observe some variation, but not such clear. Okay, so let's look at the hotness of those killer pals in the uh, RuxDB. That may be a very interesting part. Uh, we find out that actually in the whole database, only a small portion, maybe uh, less than 5% of the data are accessed during 24 hours. That means most of the killer pals are cold, and only a small portion of them are accessed. And among, among this 5% of the query pals, actually most of them are only read or write once. You can see here for the put, more than 70% of the query pals are only put once, and there's no update for those data. But there are a, a few of the query pals that are updated 100 times, so that's a very extreme um, distribution for the um, access count. As for the use case of ZPDB and UP2X, 
one interesting finding is for the ZPTB, you can see those styles for the iterator seek. Uh, that indicates that some of the key value pairs are selected as the start key to do the scan. And those keys are repeatedly selected as the start key in 24 hours. That because in ZPDB or in the, the object storage, some of the files may be selected to do the scan. And each time, you always start from the uh, first data block that will be an object. So those query pairs will have a very high number of the access counts. For the UTX, you, you can think that if user use the data or use the Facebook, there will be an update for the uh, statistics. So the distribution is, have, is wider and some of the data has a lot of updates and reads there. If we change the angle to look at the hotness, we can draw out the heat map. The X axis is the key sequence, which means we sort all the QLAP files uh, based on the same order in the RuxDB. And the Y axis is the frequency, how many times they are accessed during 24 hours. In the first figure, that's from the UDB, the red line separates the key space uh, by different table number. So we can find out that the hot key value pairs are always located together. You can see those dense green lines or green blocks. In the ZPDB case, that's even more extreme. On the left-hand side, there's nearly no access for the key value pairs, but on the right-hand side, there are a lot of hot areas in the key space. So this observation is very important because that, that indicates some of the benchmark may have the limitation. And for the merge in the UP2X, that's more interesting. We can see this kind of steps and stairs in the time series figure. So the Y axis is the time and X is the key sequence. So this figure indicates in which time a certain key is accessed. So those small blocks indicates that during half hour, a set of keys are frequently updated and accessed. And after half hour, the, the um, application switch to a new set of keys and do the updates. So we can observe those kind of uh, patterns. So after we go through the two, uh, figure, uh, two figures, we can see that in ZoxyB, actually the data, the curve pairs, have very good key space locality and sometimes they have very good temporal locality. Okay, so after we have some insights and some observations from the real workload, now we can see, okay, how good are the benchmark, right? So we first investigate uh, if the benchmark can issue the similar queries as the uh, real workload. Then we select one angle to see, okay, how about the storage IOs underneath RocksDB? Are they the same or different? So we use YSSB as one uh, use case to test. We know that we can use YSSB to generate uh, queries and we can feed them to different distributions or different model like ZFAN exponential, and then it can give us some kind of sensitive workload, right? And it can be similar. But how about the workload here? Uh, the DOCSB will generate a lot of reads and writes to the file system. Even the uplayer's query are similar. How about the reads and writes under the DOCSDB? Are they also the same? So that's the thing we care about here. We first capture the whole database, make a snapshot before we call it a trace, and then we can replace the trace on the same database. So in this process, we collect the I.O. statistics of the uh, workloads, and then we do the similar thing for the works to be uh, tested by the YSSB and compare the storage I.O. statistics to see, okay, are, are they very similar or they are different? And then we can make propose um, new models to improve YSSB. So that's the one result. We can see the red line here is the normalized replay results. For the YSSB, you can see even I fit into different uh, access hotness distribu distribution model from uniform to exponential. Actually, YSSB triggers much more reads than the real workload. 
and it has very low block cache hit ratio. Also, the writes are not uh, high enough. The question comes to, to me, okay, what's the reason cause those problems, right? If we use YCSB to do the test for the SSD, we may have got different performance estimation. So we look at the uh, codes of YCSB and look at the heat map and those statistics. We find out that in YCSB, actually, they put the hot square piles randomly in the whole key space, which means it will make all the data blocks in the RuxDB kind of hot. But we know the cache space is limited, so it will trigger a lot of cache replacement in RuxDB and finally got a lot of reads. So the heat map that from, that's from the uh, YCSB look like in this uh, figure, which means all the hot and cold curie pairs are mixed in the whole key space. So the blocks in the SSD file of RuxDB will be hot and they will not be cached in the memory. So the solution to uh, address this issue is we cut the whole key space into small key ranges and the models the hotness of the key ranges. In this way, we can preserve the hotness locality inside the key space. Then, we, in each key range, we follow the distribution of the overall hotness, such that we can achieve a good fit of the workload, and at the same time, we preserve the locality. After that, we hope that the uh, heat map can be changed to this figure, which means the hot keys Pure piles are gathered in some key range, and cold pure piles are throughout to other key ranges. This looks more similar to the heat map we see in the real workload, ZPDB or UP2X, right? So it will give us more similar storage IOs than the YCSP. So let's, let's look at the final results. We introduced four different uh, benchmarks in RuxDB or random, which means we just randomly distribute all the clear piles, and the prefix dist, which means we cut into small uh, key ranges, and uh, in each key range, we put hot clear piles together. So we can see the prefix dist does the best job. The reason is it preserves the locality of the hotness, and also it can uh, fit the workload in a very good way. So that's why it can be better than uh, YSSB. Okay, so let's conclude our uh, work. First, we introduce the key value workload analyzing, modeling, and benchmarking methodology. And also, we develop a set of tools that can be used by everyone that is uh, open sourced in the RustDB GitHub. And there is a web page, you can check that. And those can help more people to uh, contribute to those workload analyzing. And also, we categorize three very typical use cases in Facebook, from uh, UDB to a distributed uh, query store to the uh, store supports uh, AI machine learning service that give us some insights and observations to understand what the real world workload look like. With the help from those real world workloads, we further find out that YSSB, the, the widely used benchmark, does not preserve the locality of those uh, hot cure pairs. So we develop a new benchmark and show that this can be addressed in the new benchmark. So in the future, we hope that we can continue to improve YSSB with key range-based distribution, and we can control the QPS, and we can do the compression that can simulate the real workload better. And also, we hope to extend the tools to analyze such as like the correlations between queries and the correlation between key value pair hotness and the key value pair sizes. This one is important because in some cases, uh, we cannot fit the, the, the IO in a good way because there may be some correlation between the hotness and the um, workload distribution. Okay, finally, that's a small ad for RuxDB. We hope that RuxDB can be a fast and easy to use persistent QL store for any workload on any hardware platform. And welcome to use RuxDB in your research, in your product, and try that. Okay, thank you, and uh, welcome to any questions.
questions? Hi, uh, Juan from Amazon. So for your tra trace and replay tool, you're doing only read traffic, right? Because if you capture the leads of keys, then when you replay that, the key is gone and it's going to be failing, right? Uh, so your question is, uh, do we only tr trace the reads? Can, can you replay uh, traffic that is not read? What yes. I'm saying is... A actually, we, we capture all the query types from get, put, to delete, and iterator. And, and yes. uh, in the replay, it will, based on the timestamp, and the replay the get, put, delete, all those things to the... So let, let's say that you have key one on your database. Yeah. You know, your initial operation is delete key one. When yeah. you capture that and you replay, key one is gone. Uh, so that's no. going to fail. Actually, before we, we do the trace collecting, we make a snapshot of the original database. Oh, so we okay. can do exactly what happens to the um, database we do the tracing. OK, so you capture the snapshot, you yeah. trace, and then you replay. Yes, okay. yes. And, uh, but that might be different when you do the benchmarking because you need to synthetically load a database first and then do the benchmarking. So that may make some difference. Right. OK. OK. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Thanks for the question. Hi. Uh, this is uh, Jianjun from uh, ByteDance. So uh, this is more like a comment than maybe a question. So uh, about 10 years ago, I worked in Yahoo Lab, so on the Kiwi store like Peanut. So VCSB is a developer from uh, my group. Um, so basically, one like a use case in Yahoo, like a peanuts is widely used. It's like like a Facebook, you like a many different scenario. Like a one pattern is all like anti pattern. We like a keep telling people uh, not to do is essentially they just like say the partition the, the the key, but they keep like inserts continuously in like like a one partition. So we try to. Tell them like don't use the key store. You should you should not uh, like you know like a partition. Let's say you, you partition by time, but you keep like inserting rows like in just like one partition. That's really like a, like an anti pattern. We tell people not to do. So I guess like just like maybe like a thought or comments is like like in real life. Sure, you will see like a different uh, pattern, but like some pattern may not be like uh, good. You know, it's like uh, uh, yeah. I'm I'm just saying it's like a, like a. Uh, it's, I don't know, like in Facebook, right? Like if you, you I see uh, some like uh, one workload is kind of like that. You, you, you see that, like the heart yeah. keep on like a one partition. It's like, I don't know, it's like maybe the application should be like a, like a, like a re redesign there, like a schema or whatever, you know? It's like, a, yeah, just like a comment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks for the comment. That's very useful. Yes, actually for the YSB, it can test the worst case of your system, do the randomly read and write. But actually for the real workload, sometimes the application may have different behaviors. Yeah, that might be the way we can observe from the workload characterization and then improve the application's behavior. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Okay, because we are, we are out of time, so. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's thank our speaker again. Okay.